Uh, good evening, uh, one and all. It was me great pleasure to uh, you know do a Google Hangout with our beloved former president and eminent scientist, Dr. Abdul Kalam, uh, sir. Along with sir, today we have uh, co-author of his latest book, Reignited, Mr. Srijan Paul Singh. Uh, he is a IMA gold medalist and co-author of uh, Target Three Billion. So uh, it's it's a great honor to have you both and welcome. Sir, uh, so to start with, uh, this is something I think uh, probably you would have, a lot of people would have already asked you this question, in that what motivated you to write this book, especially targeting today's students and children, you know, about the new cutting edge career that are available. I mean, why, I mean, what is, you know, what made you write this book uh, to, you know, educate children about the, these new career paths that are coming up? Well, friend, it is uh, uh, this book, uh, you know, our book, uh, my book, Ignited Mind. Uh, it is uh, it reached a million people, more than a million people. And uh, when I see their profile and their question and the answers, and also when I meet uh, large number of uh, uh, young people throughout the country. One question is always there. That is uh, how, how we, the, what are the, where are we, the, the young people who like to know what is the type of opportunities in front of them. I felt I must, uh, uh, I must uh, highlight Particularly in the area of science, which uh, I was in the field, that to see that uh, what are the opportunities I want to bring it to the young population. That's why the. Sir, uh, continuing on that question itself, uh, do you feel today's education system is geared towards helping students reach out to these career paths? Uh, is our schools, teachers equipped, you know, to help students? go and, you know, explore these new cutting-edge parts? Well, I personally believe that uh, children carry on, particularly young people carry on. Most of the time, it's, uh, it's designed by parents. So, I believe Parents look at the type of employability situation in the country and that's a natural problem going on in our country. And also the scientific institution like space, atomic energy and defense research and CSAR, many institutions, they have to play a very important role, their, uh, their successful uh, events, scientific technological events should be clearly brought out and presented uh, to the young community in the schools and colleges. That should be a mission for okay. Sir, uh, again continuing with the same uh, thing. One thing we noticed, sir, when, you know, in 1969, uh, America launched, you know, sent man on the moon. It galvanized a whole set of students to pursue a career in science. Now, we recently landed a probe on Moon, Chandrayaan was a huge success, Mangalayan was also a huge success. Do you think, you know, highlighting such achievements will get more students to enter the field of science? Yeah, I, I think uh, that, for example, the mission for our, our orbital mission for the Mars, Mars orbital mission, uh, that spacecraft is in a marvelous way, that is easy. Billions and billions of kilometers and orbited around the Earth, then and left the Earth and again flew towards the Mars, and uh, it reached the Mars orbit. And our scientists, space scientists, put the young mom in the Mars orbit, and first time in the world because the first attempt it was the first time. So it's a unique event, and it has sent, uh, Mom has sent a number of pictures also taking parts, like Chandra in 
uh, is another mission where first time Indian scientists uh, uh, be able to see that the traces of the water in certain places of the moon is probably the water. So I believe that uh, such, uh, such important uh, events will make the uh, inspire a lot of people. Sir, uh, so one of the things that you had mentioned in the book is that children should develop, young scientists should develop uh, a capacity to question. So how do you advise students, you know, in the today's world, you know, to develop, you know, a questioning mind? And, you know, what is that you advise teachers to help students develop this? Well, I myself uh, met uh, about 20.5 million young people in the country last two and I asked them to ask questions. You will find uh, in class I am teaching in some of the colleges also. So I find the asking questions to be increased from young from parents, from primary school, as secondary school. The habit of asking questions tell you better not. After all, science is grown out of question, 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 till you get an answer. Here, we are experts on coffee. So, I believe the questioning habit is very important. It has to come from the home to the school to the college and be able to work. That's how the science works. Sir, uh, one of the things, uh, again, one of the things that students to get a wider exposure of these new cutting edge careers, sir. Uh, do you think it is important for institutes like you know ISRO or the Atomic Research Institutes to involve the schools and students at a young age, do programs so that they you know understand what is the work scientists and these cutting edge you know researchers are doing today? No, I believe uh, that uh, nowadays. There is a program in ISNO and DRU also to invite scientists uh, to their laboratories and they sometimes they spend their time to understand what the type of payloads is being built, what the type of technological packages built for the rockets and the uh, systems. So I believe the large movement of the student community with their teacher how to go to the, uh, to the ISRO centers and ISRO centers, space centers and other research laboratory, defense research, they must invite the student community to come to laboratories and to show them their scientific achievements and to also so that children interact with the scientists who are doing. Sir, uh, adding to that, you 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 are aware that large student section of the student population today is in rural areas. So, how do we reach out and make them aware of these opportunities? How do we reach out, you know, those students that are going to to your rural high schools and schools? See, I believe uh, the there should be a vision in all the scientific organizations. The mission should be that uh, that we must uh, read the rural area today in India, 600,000 villages are there, where 70 percent of our people live there. So that uh, schools, uh, village schools and uh, other higher education centers, our scientists should move, technology should move, interact with them, discuss with them, they have to find time for them. And uh, so that they become part of it. Of course, now the electronic situation has come in a big way. Connectivity has come in a big way through internet. So this connectivity can be used to talk about a particular technological breakthrough in uh, in various institutions, yeah, scientific institutions. The connectivity which we are using right now. Yeah. This connectivity, what we are using, yes. the fantastic system. So this should be reaching rural areas. Sir, uh, one of the things that is going to hit us in the next future is how a lot more things are going to get automated. You know, you're already seeing driverless cars, you know, a lot of 
things are moving online so it is very necessary for students uh, you know to develop new skills for the digital world well i believe automation and digital technology lead to a new opportunities a new type of tasks a new type of vision and a career for example you will see this i am advocating what is called solar powered education we have to pick up 200 200 million houses of india to have a rooftop solar system so that we can have a clean clean niche so that uh, the, the fossil fuel we have manufactured electricity and be there solar power clean power can come in so this is uh, has got a for a task a solar power station to generate from device technology to making solar panel uh, insulation task maintenance marketing and the number of work so all the input is attracted towards this type of automation digital technology is the essential in every work what we are going to so i understand sir so there is lot more opportunities that are opening up sir i just wanted to ask shrijan also and what motivated him to write you know the work what motivated him to collaborate with you sir you know in uh, yes yeah, so, so uh, uh, i'll try to uh, put in a very short story uh, so in 2008 i was uh, studying at iim indabad uh, just as a second year student there where i first uh, met uh, dr kalam and his team who came as a teacher over there in a course and uh, that's how we started working together uh, on variety of missions and for this specific uh, book the reignited book which is our second book together the first book was target 3 million together the motivation was that uh, there's so many children which uh, i have come across uh, working here uh, who need a, a clear career path in science and if you have uh, about 600 million young people out of which half of them are children in schools if we can create a good motivation for them a great career path for them and also convince their parents that getting into science is a good career even in a monetary sense Uh, we could use this 300 million children in schools to become great scientists of this uh, of the country, a country which is known for science and progress. And I think uh, any country, any nation in the world uh, which leads the global arena will be the one which will be creating terms on technology, and science, and future. So that's why we wrote this book together, both to motivate young people and also young at heart people, not just young in age but also young in mind. Actually, we make a book. Both of us believe. Also, parents should read. Parents, because they must read. They get a scientific temper, so that they can communicate to the children about some of the scientific history. Sijan and sir, are you looking at taking this forward into a kind of a movement where you reach out to schools and you know reach out to teachers, you know take this book? the message of the book forward are you looking at some kind of a movement on that i i think uh, sir has been already working on taking science to schools so there's nothing new uh, which we need to take because uh, uh, throughout uh, dr kalams uh, he's been as sir told 21 million young people uh, he has talked and uh, we've been discussing on how they need to be unique uh, in the field of science technology and anything else which they do and i'm sure you know uh, this book itself will uh, go out to students parents and to take up uh, you know a, a challenge in science and if there's any communication which any of the readers wants to do they can always contact us and we are very willing to uh, respond to those uh, queries okay good no i was asking more of in terms of taking the specific you know you are talking about new careers and new, new paths that are opening up so you know educating Uh, the book is you know doing that so i was i uh, wanted to take so we do keep uh, thing and i keep visiting with him to a lot of schools uh, in urban rural government schools private schools schools in jaunpur in varabanki in vayanad uh, all those places you know where you mentioned about rural areas 
And everywhere we go, we talk about uh, you know the ideas which we have expressed in the book or otherwise, how children need to be unique and how they need to look at careers which are beyond the standard careers and how exposure from outside world, great laboratories, could at least we can act as a medium on taking those experiences from laboratories in West or in, in urban areas of India to rural areas. So acting as that point, the bridge point, is something uh, which uh, I think uh, we are anyway is doing and uh, this book will serve only an extension to that. Right? Uh, I uh, I've just come. There are a few uh, you know questions that you know few of the readers have. Uh, a few I mean I just you know go through them with your permission. Uh, just give me a second. Uh, sir, I'm reading this question. This question comes from uh, Clementine. Uh, he's asking, so what, according to you, sir, do you want the youth of this generation to do with respect to technology? Uh, this is coming from uh, Clementine. Can you repeat the question? I think we lost the last part. Uh, sorry, I just. Uh, the question is, what? How should youth of this country use technology? You know, uh, what? How should they look at? Uh, using technology, sir, to the improvement of the country? Well, technology is a very important foundation for building the society. And uh, we have seen it. For example, space science, space technology can put a geosynchronous satellite in the orbit and there are hundreds of transponders today in the space and communicate the whole nation. Similarly, remote sensing satellites uh, resources, what are the resources in the country, they map and choose them. And it, for example, internet connects the, not only uh, cities, sometimes the rural area, of course, it can be fast and they be fast. And, uh, and uh, a mobile telephone, is one area has reached nearly 85 to 90 percent of the people in India, and it, that can be used as a medium a medium of communication, great things, great aspects, great things. And even the mobile telephone become an office or a laboratory, all opportunities. Sir, coming to the next question, uh, we have from Mr. Ankit Chawla. Uh, his question is, what do you think of India's nuclear power capabilities? Are we deficient or surplus in producing and providing nuclear power? Well, uh, my view is India is uh, has got a deterrent. The deterrent, what is necessary, what is essential, uh, definitely India is has got a principle of no first. In a such a situation, India will not use nuclear uh, system for fighting a nation, but unless there is a demand for that, demand is there. So no first use principle we have. Second thing is the type of strength what is needed to protect the nation, definitely it is available in the country and, uh, and that is uh, that call I can say. Also, in the nucleus side, uh, one thing which I would like to add is one of the biggest, and I'm talking about the civilian nuclear application, uh, one of the biggest core strength of India is thorium power. India holds about half of the world's thorium reserves, and the energy in our thorium is more than the world uranium put together. So, one thing which we, we should definitely do in terms of civilian nuclear side to work on thorium based power, which would make us surplus. That is, we have to build the thorium based nuclear reactor. I hope another 10 years it will Even Chinese are planning a lot of investment into thorium research, competing with us. So, next question is from Tirain. Uh, what should be done to generate more innovators? How should education system change 
the number of phds in india are very less or the number of you know patents and research applied are very less this is the question this is a question from chiran i think uh, both sujan uh, and sir can answer this see i believe innovation is a very important way of thinking and way of action and uh, innovation you can find in anywhere it is not uh, exclusively a particular laboratory it can start in a farming centers or it can be even fishermen folk or it can be a laboratory or it can be industry anywhere research laboratory can start but innovation is very important and uh, we, for that you need creativity creativity needs to thinking thinking provides knowledge knowledge makes you think so creativity <coughs> innovation it will lead to excellence in whatever you do so innovation is based fortunately we have national innovation foundation in this national innovation foundation promotes grassroots innovation and with various parts of it every year the process that some of them you will need to need to touch some of the few of them need to touch so there is a continuously mapping of innovation about here just increase this that be uh sujan you want to add something to that ha uh, besides what sir said i think innovation uh, has to also reach out to schools uh, at very basic levels Uh, uh instead of uh, promoting uh, road learning and a generalist uh, opportunity you know when you have to score good in all subjects you should promote also stars you know something who someone who's doing good in one particular subject like ramanujam who did well in mathematics but failed in everything else so i think innovation also requires promotion of a culture of excellence at a school level and uh, there are a lot of countries for example uh, finland Uh, teaches its children to paint walls uh, till the age of six, and does not teach anything formal education. So I think our school syllabus also needs to learn from uh, other countries, uh, from our own experiences, and evolve a curriculum which is also innovative and does not uh, bore students sometimes. So it can't be just measured by the number of PhDs. Right? You know, See, I believe, I believe that in the primary school. is a very important area for creativity primary school has to have a creative classroom creative teacher and creative essence not a big with weapon but children know so i believe we have to work for their work then innovation Sir, uh, I think we are almost running out of time. I'll just take one last question from customer. I mean, one of our readers, and I think. Sir, there is one question from Chaitanya, sir. Uh, Chaitanya is again asking with regard to the difference. Why are we still uh, importing weapons from foreign countries, and when will the capability to make our own weapons? I think. I believe. You see, I was nearly twenty years in the area of defense research and development. In certain area, we are self-reliant now. For example, missile and long-range missile, strategic missile. We are similarly electronic warfare system also. But there are many areas. There should be a mission. There should be a mission. Next ten-year mission we should have, so that many more areas. we can bring in cells sir uh, i mean a last question to both of you is uh, if you were to look back you know your career you want to start again which cutting edge career you know mentioned in the book that you would want to take well i i have written my book ignite your mind on the also wings of fire When I was a uh, year, ten-year fellow, I wanted to become a pilot. That too, fighter pilot, the Air Force. Even though I was not selected to interview, but I started 
entering the technology which can design flight systems like uh, aircraft, aircraft target, fighter target, missiles, launch vehicles, and all I entered. Well, when I became the president, I had an opportunity since I was a supreme commander for all three services. I asked for a training for how to fly. I was given a training. I flew a C-30 a few minutes. I, okay. Yeah, I have a tough question because all of these careers are so uh, good, so cool and quite interrelated. But if I were to choose, I'll choose to be a robotist. I think that's the future. I like Transformers, so I think I will design one. I think I can join you on that. So, uh, so I would like to thank both of you for you know joining us, and it was a great honor to speaking to both of you. Uh, thanks a lot. Thank you. Wish you all the best, Prabhu. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Prabhu.